who are in K through uh, fifth grade. We're going to invite them to follow who I call Lil Martin King right there. Amen. The tallest man in our building. As you turn your Bibles to the 42nd Psalm, the 42nd Psalm in the third verse, there is a question that is being asked today, a question that's being asked today, a question that is constantly being asked today. And the question is, where is God? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, where is God? There are some who believe that God has left us. There are some who believe that God has abandoned us. There are some who think that God is no longer relevant, say relevant. And that he has somehow departed from us, that he has left us, that he is no longer active in the world. And therefore, it is the time to which Satan, who becomes the prince of the air, is now ruling here on planet Earth. We look at our national scene, we look at our world scene, we hear about the threats that are going on across this nation. We see certain kinds of things that are being said and done by leadership. and We ask ourselves the question, is God still around? In fact, there's some of us who don't really believe that God is still active and alive today, that somehow he has left planet Earth and has not even left for us a forwarding address. He has moved away from this particular place. He is somewhere out there, but not active in his world today. And so some of us have this kind of response to this kind of pervasive thought that God is no longer active on planet Earth. And so we come in Sunday after Sunday filled with all kinds of fears and apprehensions as if God has abandoned us even though God has already said to us that I would never leave you nor forsake you and the word forsaken means abandon you that God has not left us that God has not abandoned us I shared with Bible class on Wednesday that my wife's favorite scripture is where David yells out, if you will, out of nowhere, that I was young and now I'm old. And I've yet to see the righteous forsaken or abandoned or their seed beg bread. And, and, and so if that's the case, why is it that on some Sunday mornings I cannot feel his presence? Why is it that when I come into church, the choir is singing, and yet there seems to be a kind of void in my life. If in fact, that once I am saved, that the Holy Spirit takes over my spirit, but yet on some Sundays mornings, I do not feel the presence of God as I did in the yesterday. Has God left us? That's, that's a very real kind of question. Say, real question. Uh, someone have said that even in the case of the skeptics, the skeptics could really just merely mimic the words of the prophets to conclude their argument that there is no God. For there were times when the prophet even cried out, why hide thou face, O Lord? Another prophet said, why art thou silent when sinners are swallowing, swallowing up swallowing up all the good. Why is there so much chaos, they asked themselves the question. Why does it seem as if God has left us? Well, if you go to the 42nd Psalm, this particular thought it is not just a thought in our days, but rather back there in ancient days, they had also had that particular thought and there is a writer probably probably one of the sons of Korah we really don't know who this particular writer was in this particular Psalm 42 the third verse but he experienced what we have experienced and some of us are experiencing even today and, and I don't know about you but sometimes life, life does bear itself down upon me that I feel the way the psalmist feel. I don't know if there's someone in the back of the church who have come in with all kinds of pains and frustrations, 
during the last week, but sometimes I feel like the psalmist feel. I feel in the Message Bible, it says, it, it says I feel like I'm on a diet of tears. Has anybody in the house ever felt like all they were experiencing was tear-stained eyes? Come on, be honest with me today. You, you've gone down through the valley called the shadow of death. You lost someone. You did not think you were going to come out of the valley. And all you did was all night long was to cry, cry. Morning came, you cried, cried. The next day, you cried, cried. Your, your meal, if you will, became tears. I, I felt that when my daddy died. He died in a very terrible fire. We got the news 5.30 in the morning. We were awakened. Larry come over to the house because there's a house fire and not only has daddy been in has daddy died in the house fire we believe but your brother has died also and for that whole week I could not explain what was going on on the inside of me I felt as if my diet was a diet of tears say diet of tears here is what the psalmist says there were tears for breakfast say tears for breakfast tears for supper the psalmist said, whoever he might have been, said, all day long, people knocked at my door, taunting me, asking me, where is your God? Where is? Say, where is your God? Say, where is God? What, what you need to understand is, is that when we, watch this now, when we look at what is going on in our world today, if we had been studying our Bibles, if we had, can I see it? If we had been coming to Bible class on Wednesday night, if we had been listening to the pastor, we would have discovered that God is a God of history and that he's in control of History. Say, God is a God of history. And, and, and God shows up in world events. Oh, oh, yeah, he shows up in world events. Say, world events. Yeah, 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 he shows up. His presence shows up in world events. And, and had we been in Bible study, y'all for quiet here, you all for quiet. You would have known that eventually the end of time would come. You would have known that what's going on today is nothing more than prophecy being fulfilled by way of end times pro prophecy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know y'all don't want to hear this today. The truth of the matter is the Bible says that in the latter days, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Can, can I help you out? All you hear is greatness and materialism and while there is this ideology of greatness and materialism, there's also this idea that we're ready to go into action at any moment. Right now, there are ships so many miles away from our, our boundaries, right? From Russia right now, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Say wars and rumors of wars. The Bible says that at the end time, I don't want to go through all the end time for, uh, prophecy, but the Bible says at the end time, uh, there will be 10 nations that will emerge to run the world and there'll be one world order and and. And, and, and organizations like the United Nation will not exist. Y'all done got all scared now. Uh, the truth of the matter is that there is uh, our, administration, our administrator, our president, who is trying to say that we don't need to be involved in the United Nation. Uh, the Bible says that, that seasons will ultimately be also confusing. Doesn't it feel like summer to some degree right today the bible said that these things will come about the bible said that god shows his presence in these historical events which means that what god is saying i'm already here because i'm moving in history 
can I scare somebody? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I didn't say, neighbor, turn to your neighbor to the right and say, neighbor, I didn't come here for this now. <laughs> say, I'm already scared. <laughs> Said, I didn't come here for this. Don't scare me anymore. I came here to be uplifted. I thought you was going to talk about God is good and he's good all the time. And you should sit up here trying to scare. The Bible says at the end of the day that those who are of God will not wear the sign of the beast either on their forehead or their hand. Do you not know that you can be scanned? Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all scared. I see. They, they're not ready for this. Yeah, right now, you know, every time, you know, I can go into the movies now and they just put, put a scan, you know, with my movie ticket, you know, pretty soon I'll be able to take my hand and I'll be able to just let them scan that thing on my, my hand. Or maybe I might walk past me to be in a chip in my head. Some people need chips in their heads right now. The Bible says at the end of the day, judgment will come. But at the end of the day, here is the beauty of it, and I almost can just close here, but I won't. At the end of the day, God shows up in mess. God shows up. Write me down. In mess. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, when things are messy, that's when God shows up. While we were yet sinners, Christ shows up. While the world looked like it was in chaos for those in Israel by way of the Roman rule, God shows up. When Jonah is in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, at the end of the day, God shows up and spew him out of the belly of the fish. When David is in the midst of his Goliath, expose if you will God shows up and says to David what do you have in your hand he said I ain't got nothing but a slingshot and three smooth stones and God turns around and says you don't need three smooth stones all you need is one stone and God does what shows up I don't know about you but I'm excited about what's happening today because at the end of the day, I know that God is getting ready to show up. Can you give God some praise? Oh yeah, he's getting ready to show up. And when he shows up, he's also going to show out. Last Sunday, I told the church about this professor who wrote on the board, he was an atheist, he wrote on the board as he was teaching his lessons to try to prove atheism that God does not exist and so he wrote upon the blackboard God is nowhere God is no w-h-e-r-e -E, nowhere he walked out of the door one of the students went up to the blackboard and rearranged the letters and changed it from God is nowhere and took the W and put it next to the N-O when the professor came in, he saw the words on the blackboard. God is now here. God is getting ready to show up. Just turn to your neighbor. Just turn to your neighbor beside you and say, God's getting ready to show up and show out. Yes, he's getting ready to show up. And he's getting ready to show out. God is now here. He's in the midst of all this stuff. He's in the midst of all this chaos. He's in the midst of all these issues. During one of the wars when soldiers fought in trenches and mud, camouflaged beneath a hole, one of the soldiers who was shooting and seeing the devastation of the war, the bodies being dropped like flies from the opposing gunfire, he suddenly asked the soldier next to him, he said, Captain, where is God? Just then, two men jumped over and above their heads with stretchers, moved out forward under enemy fire to pick up a wounded soldier with blood and broken body. The captain responded, son, look there. There he is. There goes God right now. Can you stand on your feet and give God a great big hand because God is getting ready to show up and to show out. God is not going to abandon us. God is not going to leave us. 
God is not going to forsake us. God is still here. Don't let nobody fool you. He may not be with America, but I stop by to tell you, he's with us right now. He's with the saints. He's with the Christians. He's with the people of God. He's not going to let us be forsaken. He's not going to abandon us. He walks with me. He talks with me. God is here. Can you say God is here? Say God is here right now. Say God is here right now. Can I help you out? The next time you think that God is not here and that God does not exist and that God does not move, I want you to remember these words that so often we look for God in these great cataclysmic, cosmic kinds of ways. But the Bible says that one day the prophet went and he was scared and he thought that God had abandoned him and left him and he went to hide himself in a mountainside. And the text says that he was looking for God. He thought God was going to be in the storm and God was not there. He thought God was going to come in an earthquake and shake the earth and God did not show up there. But then suddenly he says in a still small voice God shows up. And what I'm trying to tell you is, is that the truth of the matter is, you can see God in what we call, this is theological, see God in what we call the obvious. And the problem is, too many of us look beyond the obvious. The obvious of these kinds of things. If, when you think that God is not here anymore, all you have to do is look at the, the sun rising in the east. And that's God. When you see the sun setting in the west, every day, that's God. When you see the trees still growing and suddenly there is no leaves in the winter time and when spring comes, the leaves come forth. That ain't nobody but God. When you see the flower rise this spring, you turn to yourself and you say, that's God. The problem is that we are supposed to be if you will the witnesses to what God is doing the problem is we ain't telling nobody we're not witnessing like we ought to witness when we wake up in the morning we are a witness to somebody that God woke us up this morning that it wasn't the alarm clock that God woke us up this morning and started us own our way that God has been better to us than we've been to our own self we are to witness about that we are to tell somebody the sky is there because of God the sun is there because of God the moon is there because of God the problem is maybe God doesn't have a good public relation team just turn to your neighbor to your right and say neighbor you're supposed to be God's public relation team you're supposed to be God's public relation team. You're supposed to be God's public relation team. You supposed, let me say it again. You're supposed to be God's public relation team. When the Lord brings you out of nowhere, you ought to tell somebody. When the Lord heals your body you ought to say God is a doctor in a sick room when the Lord feeds you in the morning you ought to be able to tell somebody that he's bred in a starving land when the Lord takes you out of your bed of affliction you ought to tell somebody that the Lord is a doctor in a sick room when you couldn't find a job and somehow God provided you with a job you ought to say that God speaks to people and employs me places have I got a witness today you ought to tell somebody that he makes me run when I don't feel like running he makes me laugh 
when I don't feel like laughing. He brings joy in my heart. You ought to be God's public relation person. When somebody says God has left us, you ought to tell somebody God will never leave me and God will never forsake me. You ought to be God's public relation department. You ought to say God has brought us from a mighty long ways. God has brought us through mountain experiences. God has brought us through valley experience. God is a God who will never fail us. You ought to tell somebody, I was young, but now I'm old, and I've yet to see the righteous forsaken all. His seed beg grave. I just wanted to go down Black Historical Church Boulevard for just a moment and just tell you that Maybe God needs a better public relation team. And so what does he do? He allows us to go through some things. And then he brings us out. He brings us out. And once he brings us out, we're supposed to be the team that goes around. We're not supposed to be, oh, I don't know where God is. We ought to say, yes, I know where God is. Maybe he needs another public relation team. Someone who, when the trees shift to green leaves, maybe he needs somebody to put a sign beside the tree that says, courtesy of God. Maybe when he wakes up in the morning, he needs, wake you up in the morning, maybe he needs somebody who will write beside your bedside when you open up your eyes courtesy of the almighty when you have some of the modern modern technology and stuff like that maybe he needs to have a sign that says courtesy of god maybe when you go to your closet and see all of those clothes maybe he needs to put a sign over your closet door courtesy of God. Maybe when you go to your refrigerator in the morning and you needed a new refrigerator, maybe he needs to put on their courtesy of God. Maybe when you start to heat up your food, maybe he needs to put a sign over your microwave that says courtesy of God. Maybe when you sit down on that nice couch that you prayed for that you couldn't afford, maybe he needs to put on the coffee table courtesy of God. Sometimes we need to just say this is just a courtesy of God. When the sun rises in the morning, maybe he needs to put some clouds up there that writes out courtesy of God. Maybe when the sun goes down in the west, he needs to put a pillar of fire afterward that says courtesy of God. Maybe when we look out and see the moon rise at nighttime and the star twinkle, maybe he needs to write in the sky, courtesy of God. When you breathe, maybe we need somebody to say, hey, that's the courtesy of God. When your heart is beating and you can feel your heart, maybe we need a sign of somebody say, courtesy of God. Just take your breath. Take your hand and put it in front of your mouth and just breathe. And just see in the palm of your hand the writing courtesy from God. That's all it is. You don't think God is alive? When you walk out that door and you go from the, your seat to the car, that's God saying, I'm still alive. When you're able to drive your car back to your home destination and can remember your address, I know there's times I get in my car and I don't know how I got where I got. And I get chilled all over. Have you ever drove in your car? You've gone through the same pathway all the time and then all of a sudden your mind starts to straying. You start to texting. Hello, somebody. Is there a texter in the house that drives and texts? I'm going to admit my sin. And then all of a sudden, I look up, man, and I say, oh, my God, I don't know why I didn't crash. 
And all of a sudden, I hear God saying in my mind, courtesy of God. When I see my sons and my grandchildren, all I know is they could have been dead and gone a long time ago. It wasn't nothing but courtesy of God. May you come here a minute. Major, who uses here all the time as a preacher and everything? And I got a message the other day. It said Major Hughes had to have heart surgery. He had to go into his heart. And we went into prayer about Thursday. And here it is, Sunday. And he's walking around here as if nothing has ever happened. Can you share courtesy from God? That's a courtesy of God. Come here, Brother Johnson. Brother Johnson walked into the office today. He said, Reverend, I lost a loved one today, uh, last weekend, so I wasn't here. He said, but it's all right. She lived a good life. And I suppose that meant she lived a life with God. I said, how are you doing? He said, me and the wife and family is doing fine. That ain't nothing but the courtesy of God. Have I got a witness in the house? Can, can you just take just two seconds? I know you're in a hurry, but can you just take two seconds and can you think about something that God has done great for you or your family? And can you first of all praise God for that? Hey, Lloyd, come on down here. Come on down here, Knuckles. Lloyd! Look at him walking. He's been, he's been wrestling with a heart issue with Miss Lloyd. Is she here today? He, he's been sitting up here wrestling with a heart issue for 30 something years. And every time he says, Pastor, I just want you to know through the family that I got to go in for surgery. They got to do this, that, and the other. He walked up here like ain't nothing gone wrong. Lord, courtesy of and from God. So when you go back, you just thank him for bringing you 30 years that he's going to continue taking you home. Courtesy from God. Where, where Marvin at? Where Marvin Creel at? Marvin, you in the house? Marvin, you in the house. Marvin, you in the house. Marvin, come down here. Marvin had one of the few surgeries with his heart where arteries back then was just wouldn't grow and now they're just growing all out of his heart everybody else didn't make it turn around there Marvin Marvin looks like a millionaire today look at him sharp as a tech walking talking praising because he knows that every day he wakes up. Hey! 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 Every day he wakes up courtesy. From God and of God. Go give God some praise back there, Bob. Now, 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 now. Any, do, you have, do you have anything God did for you? Can you just turn to the person next to you around you and just share it with them as best you can? And if you don't mind, just, just turn to somebody and, and tell them what God has done for you in the past. Some, some very special. Something very special. And when you finish, just, just lift your hand up and say, courtesy from God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. When we don't think you're here, we know that you're not always in the cataclysmic, cosmic kinds of things, but sometimes you're in just the obvious that we miss time and time again as you bow your heads in the word of things. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you today for so many courtesies that you have given to us. But the greatest courtesy that you gave to us was your son, Jesus Christ. And you refused to leave us abandoned or forsaken. And you gave to us 